Hi parents, teachers, and students. My name is Dave Farina and I'm going to be talking to you today about STEM and how to effectively use today's mathematics to prepare students for tomorrow's STEM careers. Um, I personally teach science at uh, a local high school here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I feel that STEM is probably one of the best ways to prepare students for the careers of our future. And that's what I'm going to talk about to you today. I'm also going to be uh, presenting some information on uh, what's called the growth mindset, as well as uh, how our brain functions when put under stress, and also give you some information um, that is related to my website, which you may be on already. And if you're not, uh, you definitely want to check out the link at the bottom of this video on YouTube um, to get to my website. As a lot of the things I'm going to be discussing here, I have links to on that site. So, you may have heard of the term 21st century skills. Now, 21st century skills are what we consider to be the important skills for the jobs of our future. And in fact, some of these and most of these are uh, important things that are required in current jobs already. Um, and at this point, historically, uh, traditional teaching has not been effective in these ways. And as a teacher uh, or a parent, it's important that we prepare students in these four C's. And those four C's are critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity. And to design our lesson plans around these for teachers uh, and for parents to um, try to ask your students about these four things uh, when they get home at night and see, you know, what made you think critically today? Um, how did you collaborate with your classmates? Uh, what ways do you communicate to uh, your classmates or your teacher? And um, what is the creative thing that you did today? These are some really important um, conversations that I think parents could be having with students from all ages and could potentially get them thinking about um, how these four important things are integrated into their daily lives. Now, the 21st century skills are not really something we've traditionally seen in a math classroom, and that needs to change. Um, math is one of the most important of the STEM-related topics. Uh, Science, technology, and engineering rely heavily on math, and math is one of the most um, feared topics in U.S. high schools uh, and, and elementary schools, for that matter. And students quickly uh, can get discouraged and get into what's called a fixed mindset. And we're going to talk a little bit about the fixed mindset and growth mindset today and how we can change uh, the dynamic of math and learning in general um, by changing a mindset from fixed to growth. And as you can see here, uh, math jobs are really in demand and they're very high paying. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what jobs are out there. And once again, please go to my website um, as I have a lot of links that are related to STEM careers, what's out there, um, what they pay, and also uh, you know, ways in which you can prepare yourself to be in a STEM career. Here's the top 25 STEM careers of 2016. And you can see if you look uh, through these, I would encourage you to pause the video at this point and take a look at all of these uh, different jobs. Um, most of them rely heavily on math. Through my research, I've actually come across a really good resource in um, the U.S. Department of Labor. And this is a graph that uh, shows STEM employment versus non-STEM employment. Uh, the first part here is from 2000 to 2010. And you'll notice that uh, STEM grew at 7.9% during this time period whereas non-STEM employment only grew by 2.6%. Uh, as most of you already know, this was a time of the Great Recession, and um, we still were seeing uh, some job growth 
as we rebounded from the Great Recession, but STEM outperformed this by a long shot. Uh, in the future, from 2008 to 2018, um, this source projected that we were going to have a 17% growth in STEM-related careers, whereas we only will have a 9.8% growth in overall job growth. This table um, gives you an understanding as to how STEM careers can help you financially uh, at different levels. So um, in this first one here, we've got a high school diploma or less. STEM careers uh, earn you $24.82, whereas non-STEM careers are coming in at only $15.55 or a difference of $9.27 or 59.6%, a huge difference. Um, by being in a STEM career at this level. Uh, some of those differences are going to reduce as we get higher into education, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but we're going to show you some other data that might uh, show you the importance of STEM even at the higher levels as well. So um, as you can see here, we've got differences of 40% for some college or associate's degree, 26.7% at a bachelor's degree level, and in increase or difference of 12.3% at the graduate degree level. Uh, this figure is basically a recession regression based hourly earnings premium. So what this means is we've taken into account uh, demographics and locations and age and all of the other factors that could potentially skew our data. And we've um, corrected for those to make sure that we're still looking at just STEM versus non-STEM careers. Uh, and when we do that, we still see a significant increase um, in the amount of money for less than a bachelor's degree for a STEM career versus a non-STEM career. And this is in percentage of premiums or how much more a STEM career would make. Um, here at the bachelor's degree level, we've got about a 20% average or so uh, difference or gain compared to a non-STEM career. And then at a graduate level, we're seeing uh, around a 10% average um, in our significantly more money uh, category. The employment of STEM related careers is also something that we should look at because what's it worth to make more money if you're out of a job? And if you look here, STEM careers uh, were lagging behind in employment just ever so slightly uh, back in the 90s and into the early 2000s um, in terms of the unemployment. So their employment being unemployment being lower is a good thing in this case. That's that's showing that STEM careers have less unemployment. Uh, Non-STEM careers have more unemployment. In terms of uh, workers age 25 and over with a bachelor's degree or higher, we um, have a breakdown of what kind of jobs we could expect in these STEM careers uh, and also non-STEM careers. You'll see there are not as many STEM careers in total compared to other careers. Um, we've got non-STEM careers over here. Uh, and in the STEM careers, we've got about 9,262 uh, of the sample size of 41,530. And we've got 32,268 non-STEM degrees. So yes, we definitely have a disparity in terms of the number of jobs that are out there. But that will change over time. More jobs will be there. Uh, computers are a part of this that's fairly um, small. Math uh, is, pure math is the smallest area. Engineering and physical science and life sciences are the big two. Um, this one, however, is going to be in computers, the one that will eventually employ a lot of STEM related jobs. Um, 
unemployment rates in STEM and non-STEM occupations. Um, and now we're looking at workers with a bachelor's degree or higher. And you'll notice compared to our last graph, this was unemployment rates across the board, not including what level of education they have. This one includes only with bachelor's degree or higher. And you'll notice that STEM uh, unemployment rates actually can at the higher degree levels sometimes have higher unemployment. As you can see back here in the 2000s, um, the study, if you go to my website and read the actual U.S. Department of Labor estimates, uh, they believe that this was actually due to the um, Y2K, if you look here, the year 2000, um, employed a lot of computer folks and uh, after Y2K, they no longer needed those computer people, and a lot of them were laid off, and that's what you're seeing here. Um, then they got retrained slowly or found other jobs, and their unemployment went back down. And after that, it seems to follow pretty much the same pattern as the non-STEM career paths. And at times, it can be lower. This graph shows you a distribution of STEM-related jobs and non-STEM-related jobs and the percentage of people that work at each educational level. Um, you're going to look at this graph at first and say, whoa, wait a second, what is this? Um, so I'm going to walk you through it. Each of these numbers for STEM-related careers are the ones that are broken into many different parts. Uh, and if you tally these all up, they will equal 100%. Okay, so you'll notice for STEM-related careers, the, the most people work at a bachelor's level, the second most people actually work at a graduate level, the third most work at a college level like an associate's degree, and the least number of people in STEM-related careers work at the high school level of education. That's exactly opposite compared to non-STEM careers. If you look here, non-STEM careers, most of the employment is at the bottom um, with the high school level of education. Then we've got some college, an associate's degree or something like that, a traditional uh, bachelor's degree. We've got even lower amounts of people working in non-STEM careers. And then finally, we've got graduate degree level people um, at even lower levels of uh, the total amount. Um, once again, though, however, Keep in mind that there is a lot more employment in the non-STEM career category than the overall STEM careers. And that number is seen on this graph here with the totals for total total, total STEM, and total non-STEM degrees. So I also wanted to try to find out how is this going to affect women versus men? Um, women actually are gaining some ground. Uh, a lot of people out there are saying women in STEM, and I completely agree, uh, but there's some misnomers out there that we need to fix, as pointed out by the CBS News article on my website. Um, you'll see that there's some areas like engineering and computer science that really could use a lot more women. Um, but we do have over uh, the course of 2005 to 2010, as we go from here to here on the graph, we've got a little bit of a decrease in math, physical science, we're seeing an increase, biosciences, we're seeing an increase, social science, we're seeing an increase, and psychology, we're seeing an increase in women in this workforce. PhDs are the same way, increasing across the board. In order to take advantage of this, we need to have a growth mindset. It's not the fault necessarily of anyone, but it's a cultural thing. We as in the United States need to fix this mindset, especially with math. Um, and in order to do that, um, we need to fail at some things. Uh, when we fail, we learn. As you can see by this graph on the right, uh, our brain activity actually is heightened uh, during a failure situation when you're not understanding something. So we need to challenge our students. Um, there's lots of different ways the growth mindset can be uh, put in place, and one of them could be praise, and I unfortunately had this cut off right here. Uh, so let's see if I can get rid of my face. Uh, I'm not having any luck. So um, when you have a growth mindset, you need to make sure you're encouraging students in the correct